Welcome to Electron Online. Continuing with some of the basics about diffraction, we're going to try and understand really what causes diffraction in the first place. Well, diffraction is really the principle of light going through a narrow opening. If the wavelengths of the light are at par, about the same size as the opening itself, then the light will what we call diffract around the corners and go in every direction on the other side of that slit, on the other side of that small narrow opening. Let's say the distance of the opening is A, so that's the width of the slit, and so we can then imagine that light will go in all different directions. But instead of seeing a pattern over here, we have a bright spot here, and it slowly diminishes in strength as it goes out, we see a very interesting what we call diffraction pattern, where we see a very strong central maximum, then it goes down to minimum and to zero, then we see a secondary maximum, a third maximum, and so forth, and as you go further out, the size or the intensity of those adjacent maxima decreases as you go further and further out. And in between you have those areas where there's a minimum. So what causes that? What is the reason why we have that interesting pattern? And also there's some associated question, um, equations that we're going to develop and they're going to come over here. We're going to develop some equations where we can easily calculate what that diffraction pattern looks like and what the intensity of that diffraction pattern looks like at different places along the screen on the other side. What we have to realize here is when we have light coming through a slit, realizing it's going to diffract everywhere, what happens on the other side when the light actually hits the screen? Well, imagine for a moment that you look at the screen directly across from the, from the opening, all the rays of that beam will have to travel the exact same distance, and so since all the rays travel the exact same distance, there's no what we call interference at all because they all come in at the same phase, and so you see a very strong central maximum right here. But as you then look a little bit further up, then you realize the portion of the light that goes in this direction, notice that at the top of the beam, those rays have to travel a shorter distance than the rays at the bottom of the beam. And you can see that the bottom beam, this would be the extra distance traveled by the rays at the bottom of the beam compared to the rays at the top of the beam. If we then again look at the rays that go a little bit further up in this direction, Notice that that extra distance traveled by the bottom of the beam becomes larger and larger and larger as we look further and further and further up the screen this direction. Of course, the same will happen in the other direction right here. The key with understanding a diffraction pattern, because we're not dealing with two separate beams like we do in a double slit inter interference pattern, here we have just a single slit, and the key to understanding a diffraction pattern is to realize that as you go further and further in the beam, the rays, the adjacent rays in that beam will travel a farther and farther and farther distance. What we look for is the point at the beam where the exit distance traveled by a ray in the beam is exactly half a wavelength farther than at the very beginning of the beam. Now, if you just look up at a shallow angle like this, if theta, and this is the angle theta, the lookup angle, theta, if theta is small, you can see then, then you have to go quite a ways into the beam before you find the spot in the beam where the extra distance travels is exactly half a wavelength. If you look further up, if theta is a larger angle, then you don't have to go as far into the beam to find the point where the extra distance traveled is a half a wavelength. Now, the key again, is that if you imagine that there's a, a wave going along here at the very top of the beam, and then there's a wave over here, and this second wave travels exactly a half a wavelength farther than this one right here at the top, this very narrow portion of the beam, and this very no narrow portion of the beam, if this travels a half wavelength farther than this one, then those two will cancel each other out. And now what happens is if you look at the next beam right below that, and let me use a different color, so you look at the beam right below that, and then the beam right below that, again, those two beams will be exactly a half wavelength out of phase, and therefore when they reach that point over here, they will cancel each other out. And then if you look at the, the next portion of the beam right below that, and I'll use a different color again, and you take a look at this one right here, whoop, I'm out of sync a little bit, there we go, then you can see that those two blue rays also will cancel each other out because they will also be a half a wavelength out of phase. And in such a way, you'll see every small section of the beam up here will cancel out a small section of the beam over here. You can see that this first half of the beam will cancel the second half of the beam. So this beam cancels out this beam and you'll see nothing over here. There'll be complete destruct interference. And so therefore you see a minimum. So that's complete destructive interference.
Now what happens when you have a, a, a greater lookup angle like this? Now you realize you don't have to go as far into the beam before you hit a point where this portion of the beam will travel half wavelength farther than this one. So again, you have the same principle that this beam right here and this portion of the beam right here, they're half a wavelength out of phase so they will cancel each other out and the ray right below it will cancel out this one and the one below that will cancel out this one. But let's say, for example, that this is only one-third the way into the beam. So you can see that the first one-third of the beam will cancel out the second one-third of the beam. So that this first portion of the beam will cancel out the second portion of the beam, and the third portion of the beam will actually still get through with nothing to interfere with. And so therefore, you see a maximum. Of course, that maximum will not be as bright as the central maximum because you realize here the central maximum is illuminated by the entire width of the beam. Here, the first maximum away from the central maximum is only being illuminated by one-third of the beam. So this here is only one-third of the total beam. And that is then the portion that lights up that screen at that location. If you then look further up again, you'll notice that maybe you only have to go into the beam a quarter of the way before you find a point where it cancels out with this one because there will be half wavelength out of phase. So the first quarter will cancel out the second quarter, the third quarter will cancel out the fourth quarter. So the whole beam will again be destructively interfered with portion by portion and then you'll see another minimum. Of course that would be farther up the screen and so forth. So the whole concept of understanding diffraction patterns when you have a single slit is to realize that as you go further and further up the screen, if you have a greater and greater lookup angle, different portions of the beam will cancel each other out and when that happens, either all of the beam will cancel out, you'll have a minimum, or a portion of the beam will make it through and you actually will get a maximum. So that's the concept of diffraction. Now we're going to take a look at one step at a time when you'll get a minimum will get a maximum and how to actually calculate the distance of the screen, the angle associated with it, and, and eventually also the intensity associated with different portions of that diffraction pattern. So hopefully that will get you better understanding. If you still want to get more understanding, keep looking at the videos and I'll start explaining bit by bit how that diffraction pattern can actually be calculated and how the intensity of the diffraction pattern can actually be calculated. So stay tuned and look at the next one.